Welcome to another episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, we're going to take a look at state management for the Ethereum virtual machine. This uh, video and these slides are available under Creative Commons license. So let's talk about Ethereum state. The job of the Ethereum virtual machine is to update the Ethereum state by computing valid state transitions as a result of smart contract uh, code execution as defined by the rules of the Ethereum protocol. This aspect leads to the description of the Ethereum system as being a transaction based state machine, which reflects the fact that external actors like the people who hold wallets and addresses and miners are going to initiate state transitions by creating, accepting and ordering transactions. So let's think about what Ethereum state is. So at the top level, we have the Ethereum world state. The world state is a mapping of Ethereum addresses, you know, the 160 bit uh, values uh, to accounts. At the lower level, each Ethereum address represents an account comprised in an ether balance stored as a number of way owed by the account, a nonce representing the number of transactions sent from this account if it's a wallet address or the number of contracts created by it if it's a contract account, um, and the account storage, which is a permanent data store, which is only used by smart contracts, and the account's program code, again, only if the account is a smart contract account. Um, an externally owned account, a wallet will always have no code and it won't and will have an empty storage. So when a transaction results in smart contract code execution, the Ethereum virtual machine is instantiated with all the information required in relationship to the current block being created and the specific transaction being processed. In particular, the e Ethereum virtual machines program codes read only memory is loaded with the code of the contract account being called the program counter is set to zero and the storage is loaded from the contract account storage. The memory is set to zeros and the block and environment variables are all set. A key variable that uh, is really important that we're going to be talking about a lot later is the gas supply for this execution, which is set to the amount of gas paid for by the sender at the start of the transaction. As code execution progresses, the gas supply is reduced according to the gas cost of the operations executed. You know, if you have an initial amount of 100 and then you execute an operation that costs 10, then you go down to 90. Uh, if at any point the gas supply reaches zero, we get an out of gas exception. And execution immediately halts and the transaction is abandoned. Uh, no change in this case where a transaction is abandoned, no changes to the Ethereum state are applied, except for the sender's nonce being uh, incremented uh, for the transaction, and their Ether balance goes down to pay the block's beneficiary for you know the, the winning miner for the resources used to execute the code uh, to the halting point of that particular transaction. So at this point, you can think of the Ethereum virtual machine running on a sandbox copy of the Ethereum world state with a sandbox version that was running that transaction that didn't have enough gas being discarded completely if execution can't complete for whatever reason. However, if the execution does complete successfully because there was enough gas, then the real world state is updated to match the sandbox version of the state, including any changes to the called contract storage data, any new contracts created, and any ether balances that were initiated. Because a smart contract can itself effectively initiating, initiate transactions, Cold execution is a recursive process. A contract can call other contracts, with each call resulting in another Ethereum virtual machine being instantiated around the new target of the call. Each instantiation has its sandbox world state initialized from the sandbox of the EVM, as we discussed previously. So each instantiation is also given a specified amount of gas 
for its gas supply, not exceeding the amount of gas remaining, uh, and so may itself halt for an exception due to be given too little gas to complete its execution. Again, and if that happens, the sandbox state is discarded and execution returns to the Ethereum virtual machine. So tune in next time uh, when we're going to talk about the compilation process where we compile Solidity to Ethereum virtual machine bytecode.